But if you guys see me rubbing my eyes throughout this video, just know say that man's tired right now. It's 11.45 at night. I'd say around one, maybe half one, maybe two o'clock at the latest. I started laying this carpet in my house. So obviously I got a staircase, then I got a half landing, then I got another staircase, and then I've got a full landing. And obviously I've got my three bedrooms up here in it. So I ain't gonna show you right now because I made a little miniature vlog on it. I'll release that soon once it's done. But I've done the top landing where I'm sitting down now. I'm actually sitting on the floor. And I've done downstairs to the half landing. Now this will make sense what a half landing is if you don't even know what that is. Um, once I release a little miniature vlog soon. The carpet, I ain't finished laying the carpet yet, you know. Guys, that's like, let's say eight hours. Yeah. Let's say eight hours and a man hasn't even finished the carpet. Now, obviously, I ain't no carpet fitter. I've actually done a good job, and as, it, as I said, man, I'll show you in it, but I ain't no carpet fitter, I know, but fucking hell, eight hours and the job still ain't done. You know, whilst I was laying this carpet, I realised the only reason, because certain people, people that I know personally, and some of you lot will, obviously if you watch my other videos talking about property and that, obviously I tell you when I was 24 I bought my first property and then when I was 25 I bought the, um, the place in Egypt. So in that one year period, uh, so in 2017, I bought uh I bought my house in Northampton and then at the end of 2017 I bought the place in Egypt. So in one year I bought two properties when I was 24 going on 25. A lot of people will think, fuck, Jay man, he's like so advanced, so far ahead, people them that know me, people that probably watch the channel and shit. Do you know what my secret is? You know. The average person was in a race with me. They would beat me in a race, you know. Do you know what the average person's problem is? They don't take no risk. They don't have a dream. They don't have a vision. I'm actually a slow person. I ain't dumb or nothing like that, but. Obviously, we have our strengths and our weaknesses, obviously, in it. Yeah, like physical activity and shit. <laughs> in terms of doing work, oh, that is not my forte. Like, I'm a good electrician, I'm a good electrical tester, I know my stuff, but the physical job, I'm fucking slow. Yeah. Me, I take a long time to. I wouldn't say think about doing stuff, but. Yeah, just physical activity is is not my forte. I reckon if the average person had the same drive and ambition as me, and they were able to take risks, I think most people would pass me. I had a man say, hard work, don't cut it. Yeah. Obviously, I like to talk about, yeah, hard work, hard work, hard work, and shit. Yeah, hard work don't cut it if you're just relying on hard work. You have to take risks. You have to step out of your comfort zone. That's why I'm so far ahead. Because I take risks. I step out of my comfort zone. I gave this analogy to someone the other day. Um, again, fucking fly. As I said, you know, you can put in as much hard work as you want. If you don't take no risks, you ain't going to get nowhere. You have to see the journey to success a bit like being at the casino. Just a little bit. Now, hear my now. If you go to the casino and you play roulette. Now, I don't go to the bookies or the Betfred or Coral or William Hill. I don't. 
Yeah, I don't go in there. I don't even like going in there to take a piss. For one, the toilet stem is nasty. And for two, I don't want to be seen going in and out of the bookies and stuff like that. But let's say you went to the casino and you played roulette. Your return will never be as much in the same amount of time if you place little bets. If you're always placing little one pound bets, your return is not going to be as much as if you place a hundred pound bets at a time. So imagine if you're in the casino and you place 10 bets and each bet's one pound, your return is not going to be as much as if you place a hundred bets. So yeah, I've got a bit of hay fever as well. Think of the average person as a person who plays it safe, places these little one pound bets. And think of me as a person who just will risk a hundred pound bet at once. That's why I'm able to advance and get to places quicker than other people. Or it seems like I'm willing to get to places quicker than other people. It's only because I take greater risks. Of course, you need to have the dream, the ambition, the drive, obviously. And, 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 you know, they have to work together. But the basis of it, the reason why I'm in the position that I'm in now is because I'm willing to take risks. And <laughs> the thing about risks and property and stuff, people think buying a property is a risk. I'm telling you right now, buying a property is not a risk. Obviously, there are things like subsidence. Yeah, you, there are problems with the property. You, you could transfer the money to a dodgy solicitor and a man run off with your peas, obviously. You know? But other than that, buying a property is not a risk. The only thing with buying a property is, is it worth buying that property over there? Because in 10 years time, it's only going to go up by 50 grand. Whereas if I buy a property in London in 10 years time, it's going to go up by maybe 150 grand, depending on the area. So in terms of property and stuff, I don't think there's any risk with buying a property. I think it's more so, is it worth the money? So that this is why JY seems like he's so far ahead. If you if you think that oh, what what's his secret? Why 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 is he why why does my man seem like he's so far ahead? Like has he had a head start on people? No. No, if you're new to the channel and this is one of your first or second videos, no, I ain't had no head starts. Yeah. If anything, look, a man's been to prison. I didn't go to prison for a long time, don't get it twisted. Eight weeks. Yeah. Just a little yeah, eight weeks. I've started off in a deficit. I come from a poor family. We had a roof over our head and I always had clothes on my back. But there weren't no holiday every year, every three years. No, there was no periodic holiday. I went on holiday one time. I think I was 13 years old. Went to Jamaica. I would have been able to go out on a nut. I wouldn't even call it a holiday. My great grandma passed away, so my mum had to go out to Jamaica for the funeral. That was when I was in year 11. I wasn't able to go out to Jamaica anyway because I had my um, GCSEs, which I got. <laughs> I actually got kicked out of school. Um, I got unofficially expelled, actually, two weeks before study leave. Obviously, if you don't know what study leave is, study leave is just before the end of year exams, the GCSEs. You go home for two weeks and you study. Anyway, or you go home for a week and study or whatever, isn't it? Anyway, I got kicked out of school two weeks before the study leave. So they just said, come back um, when the exams commence. And, but guys, if you, you're new to the channel, you don't know about my prison videos or when I used to be in a gang, being a damn fool and that. I ain't from no silver spoon society. I don't come from some... Obviously, I know it's not middle class, it's not the be one I don't come from some middle class family where I had a private education or a private tutor. Nah. I went to state school just like everyone else. But I just had the mindset, I had the drive 
even when I was in school, buying and selling goods. So, anyone think that, yeah, he's had help? Yeah, someone's given him a head start? Nah. Obviously, man them have helped me out and show me the way. Shout out my boy Bengal, he showed me how to, you know, furnish a property on a budget and that. So, if you don't get time, I'll leave a link in the description box below. You can go and watch that video about how to furnish a property on a budget. That video was inspired by my friend Benga. He showed me, yo, this is how you furnish a property on a budget, you know, just buy second hand goods and where to go and this and that. So yeah, shout out my boy and he he helped me out in it. But other than you know, people just helping me out, giving me advice and stuff. No one's giving me a helping hand and say, yeah, boom, just here's some money. Or I will donate this to you and that. All myself. So. There is a bit of an element, obviously, yeah, I feel like, you know, you can be a self-made man. But um, at the same time, we do need people to help show us the way and that. But it's not the be all and end all. It's not the be all and end all. You need to take risks. Yeah, a man said, yeah, hard work don't cut. Yeah, you're damn right. Yeah, you can work hard as, as hard as you want. But if you're working hard, as in putting in 14 hour days all day long, yeah, you're only going to get so far. That money that you're earning, you need to start risking that money. You need to start venturing that. You need to start stepping out of your comfort zone and taking some losses. You know what I mean, man? Maybe some people watching this right now. There's people out there sitting with 50 grand in their account, 100 grand in their account, just gathering dust. They ain't got no real plans for that money. Scratching their, yeah, scratching their head. Oh, what am I going to do with this money? Oh, I might buy a property. It might be too risky. As I said before, there's no fucking risk with buying a property other than the ones that I mentioned. You need to start taking more risks. Life is too short to be playing it safe and staying within your comfort zone. I don't want to guilt trip no one. God, I said this to someone the other day and I was like, oh, stop trying to guilt trip me, Jay. Anytime you're feeling lazy, anytime you're supposed to go running and you can't be bothered or exercise, whatever, apparently the gyms are open now. Anytime you can't be bothered, just imagine, just remember, there's some poor child in Great Ormond Street Hospital whose health is so bad, they're bedridden. They don't even have to be a child. It could be, you know, a grown man, whatever, or a grown woman, whatever, they're in a wheelchair. Not their fault. Whatever, something happened to them. They're in a wheelchair. They would love to be able to go out and go for a run. There might be people who have passed away. Innocent people. For whatever reason, they might have got killed, murdered, died of natural causes. Young people, whatever. They would love to be alive today. So that they can take the risks that you are able to take. You should feel guilty for being an able-bodied person and not taking no risks. Man them. Even on a little small scale. Stop looking at all these girls when you walk down the street and admiring them. Bruh. Step out of your comfort zone and approach a girl. If you've gone a couple years without approaching a girl and you've been single or whatever, or if you're in a relationship and you're cheating on that, but listen, you've been admiring girls, preying girls, and you ain't approached them, you ain't got no confidence. I'm not saying, you know, you have to be raggo and Big balls are still approach girls in front of people on the train and stuff. But you're walking down the road, you see a girl on her own, standing at the bus stop. There's no one around. In a situation like that, and you think that girl's nice, and you're looking at her like you're proper getting a good glimpse of her. 
in a situation like that, if you ain't got the balls to approach that girl, you lack serious confidence, man. You ain't got no confidence. There's all man out here on dating apps wondering why they haven't got a girl or they ain't dating the girls that they want to date. <laughs> That's partly the problem. You ain't stepping out of your comfort zone. You're being lazy. You're taking the easy route. Yeah. Or maybe POF or whatever. Sending out a hundred messages a day. One, two responses for a few overweight girls that you don't like. And then you wonder why you ain't getting no girls. Girls like men who are confident, you know. Guys who are confident are guys who take risks. I know, man. They walk like they got, yeah. Swag-tastic. You would think that they're a super confident person. Deep down, they're not really confident. They're only confident in one or two little aspects. They don't take no risks. I'm not saying you have to be confident at everything, but put it this way. I know a man. It was his son's first birthday. First birthday, you know. Man rented out a hall. It don't even really matter about the numbers. I don't really care in it, but there's like, I don't know, 40 people, 30 people, whatever in it. You know, it was time for the speeches. And the man's uncle gave a speech for his son's birthday. I'm there in the crowd and the uncle was done the speech, finished the speech. And the man didn't even have the balls to stand up for one minute. Not one minute, you know, and say, yo, I'm not one to really give speeches, but I just want to say, you know, thanks for everyone coming and that, you know, much appreciated. You got my people that's here, got my girls people that's here. Just, uh, you know, I'm glad to have the support and that. The man had no confidence, no balls to even stand up and say that. This is what I mean about people not taking risks, people not take, standing up, stepping out of their comfort zone. How can a man have a, a, a birthday party for his kid and another man gave a speech on behalf? Man, you must be mad. First of all, I'm making sure I'm the first person who gives the speech. Yeah. Not my girl. Not my mum. Not my son. Yeah. Me. But anyway. It's probably like midnight now, so I'm going to quickly edit this video, upload it. You know, I can't see it, but yeah, that's the reason why it seems as if, like, yeah, I'm quite fired and shit like that. Taking risks, that's it. Don't be a one pound bet type of person, be a hundred pound bet type of person. Stay wise.